Hello, from Pima Community College's East Campus. My name is Steven Higginbotham, and I'm proud to serve as the Dean of Arts he here at Pima Community College. I would like to begin today's event by recognizing that this campus and all of Pima's facilities are located on the ancestral grounds of the Tohono O'odham and Pasquayaki people. We are proud of our community's heritage, culture, and history. As you may be able to see in the distance, creativity and artistry surrounds us here on the East Campus. Today, we are celebrating the newest installations in our terrific Sculpture on Campus program. This artistic initiative, which began in 2004, provides an exciting opportunity for artists to present their contemporary outdoor sculptures to the public in a beautiful educational setting. Artists from near and far are given the opportunity to exhibit their sculptures to the general public in a partnership that turns our East Campus into an open access gallery and an extension of the artist's studio. This venue for viewing and appreciating public sculpture truly enriches the daily lives of our students, faculty, and staff here on the East Campus. And it also is an established and valuable art resource for all of Tucson's residents. Particularly at this time, when we are all cooped up in our homes and maintaining our social distance due to the continued challenges posed by COVID-19, the purpose and value of art is so apparent. Art connects us in the here and now, reminds us that we are not alone, and expresses our shared experiences as human beings. We need that now more than ever. Art nurtures our spirits, entertains our minds, provides an escape from our daily challenges, and engages our hearts in exercises of empathy and compassion. It helps us to tell our stories, beautify the places where we live and work, share our culture and beliefs, investigate our perspectives, and celebrate our diversity. Through art, we feel deep emotions, process our experiences, discover connections, and make an impact. Art in all of its forms, paintings, drawings, music, films, binge-worthy Netflix series, virtual art exhibitions, live streamed theater performances, and especially the new public sculpture sculptures we are honoring here today, all of them have helped us to find joy and relief in this challenging time. On behalf of all of us, I would like to extend my gratitude to the artists of these new installations and the artists in our Tucson community who have shared their talents and generously provided a dose of happiness when it seems to be needed most. In this note of thanks, I also want to include our amazing students, faculty and staff in the Arts Division at Pima Community College who continue to create and share their work even in the face of adversity. Their work is so inspiring. At this time, I would like to introduce our esteemed guests, some of whom will be joining us virtually, and they'll share their remarks. Our guests include the Chancellor of Pima Community College, Lee Lambert, Damian Klinko, Chair of Pima's Board of Governors, and Michael Stack, a visual arts professor and director of the Sculpture on Campus program. Here they are. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And I just want to say welcome to our Sculpture on Campus uh, event and program today. And I thought I'd first start out and just thank uh, a, number, a number of individuals and, and groups First and foremost, I want to thank the, the governing board. Without their tremendous support, uh, we would not be able to take the arts and elevate them to, uh, to the level of prominence that is so critical for our community, for our students and beyond, to a center of excellence. And I, know, I know Damian, uh, our board chair, will speak here shortly. Also just want to recognize uh, Ted Roush, who's not able to be with us today, but he's the vice president of campus, uh, of the East Campus, and thank you, Ted, for your leadership. And Stephen, I wanna thank you. Uh, since you've come on board with us and 
taking the helm of the arts uh, division. Uh, you're taking us to a whole new level of excellence. So thank you for your leadership. And, and Michael, uh, I mean, you set the standard, Mike, in terms of really integrating uh, uh, the four superpowers, uh, the AI, the technology into the arts. Uh, and I think you've set an incredible standard for, for all of us. So thank you for that. And of course, uh, all of this would not be able to happen without a great facilities team to help with the installations of the sculptures. So thank you, Bill Ward and your team for that. And of course, we wouldn't be able to do today's event without having a great team from PCC TV. So Dan and Lisa and all of you for the great work you do uh, to make events like this happen uh, each and every day. And Karina, uh, thank you. Uh, Karina serves as our arts marketing coordinator. And she's the one to help bring this together today, both in a virtual and in-person element. So thank you. Uh, also I wanna congratulate Pima Arts for providing enriching cultural experiences, which keep, keep everyone safe uh, by creating these live stream performances on our YouTube channel. And like the rest of the college, just implementing creative ways to teach the arts remotely. I just wanna say just a few words about the importance of the arts division. Uh, sculpture on campus has been part of East Campus since 2004. Sanskrit, the student arts and literary magazine has been named number one among community colleges for five straight years. And then during uh, uh, the pandemic, our fashion design students uh, under the leadership of uh, Nancy Spaulding have been sewing masks for our community uh, almost from the outset. And so my hat's off to them and their contributions to the health and safety of our community. And as I noted earlier, uh, arts are part of a, a critical component of our centers of excellence. So I just wanna close with, with the words of Yagav Agam, who is an Israeli artist. Uh, and as you all know, he's best known for his pioneering work around kinetic art. And he once said, art, there are two distinct languages. There is the verbal, which separates people, and there is the visual that is understood by everybody. Again, welcome to today, and I look forward to another successful event at Pima Community College. I'll turn it over to you, Damian. Thank you very much, Chancellor Lambert. On behalf of the Pima Community College Governing Board, I wanna welcome you to PCC and acknowledge the impressive work being presented today. Pima Community College is incredibly proud to foster and invest in creative endeavors like sculpture on campus. I personally studied art history in college and know the value and the importance of exposure to the arts. It, expand, it expands creative thinking, how we think, and creates opportunities for new questions. When I uh, am fortunate to travel, I always stop in at local museums to understand the cultural vibrancy of local communities and engage in a dialogue about who we are and those places. Henry Matisse said, creativity takes courage and we must work as a college to cultivate that courage. We're incredibly proud of these new works and thrilled that they're presented on our campus to enrich our community, not only the college, but the city as a whole. As Lee noted, as we embark on the creations of centers of excellence in the arts, we look forward to Pima Community College becoming a recognized thought leader in the arts in Southern Arizona. We know how important the arts are to the vibrancy of our community and our culture. And this board is committed uh, to uh, investments in, in, in that endeavor. So welcome and thank you. We look forward to uh, seeing these in person in the coming, in the coming weeks and, uh, and thank you for being here. Hi, my name is Mike Stack and I'm art faculty here at Pima Community College. Today is a great pleasure in this virtual environment that we welcome you today to our newest installment of Sculpture on Campus. Founded in 2004 with a single pad laid from some extra cement over uh, from a campus sidewalk uh, that literally is behind my shoulders here, uh, we basically came up with the idea of setting up sculpture on this campus. Sculpture on Campus has grown to seven installations since then and now has over 23 dynamic and thought-provoking sculptures that grace the beautiful grounds of Pima Community College's East Campus. In celebration, we would like to thank 
and share with you in this program the artistic efforts and insights of Carlton Bradford, Piper Bast, Jorge Caballero and Ivan Castro, Kevin Carone, Olivier Mosse, Willie Ray Parrish, and Joan Waters. Each artist was truly a pleasure to work with, which was which, what are truly challenging times. Each cited their work on the campus, was instrumental in all the copy that goes into our brochures and all the copy that the students will read in the future, and has truly added their very distinctive visions to the wide spectrum of viewpoints and perspectives that make up the diversity that is the Sculpture on Campus program. By design, both physically and, but more importantly, by the very vision of the college as an admission and open access college, and that meets the diverse and challenging needs uh, of our students and community. Sculpture on campus is the very reflection of that ethos, where diverse viewpoints are open for all to engage, contemplate, and build upon. Where visitors from the world, the state of Arizona, and closer to home, members of our own Tucson community that includes seniors that stroll these grounds, kids visiting us after a hard game of basketball at the Clemens Center just up the pathway here, local high school groups that visit us on a continual basis, and even dog walkers even, and yes, other artists that have found Sculpture on Campus to be an oasis for inspiration. For our college community, Sculpture on Campus offers students and faculty alike the spark to strike up new conversations, bring up new angles in the curriculum, and offer immediate challenges and discussions that are the very essence of the dialogue that is so important to the qualities that give meaning to higher education. For our staff, SOC, as that we commonly refer to here, has become a source of pride in the very embrace of the energy and visual dynamic it visually gives to the campus as they help our students with that same energy continually throughout the day and the night. Sculpture on campus is a visual embodiment of humanity in all its diverse forms, and many have walked away enriched by its breadth and its scope. So as the college, the country, the whole world meets the new challenges of this COVID reality that we are all grappling with, and as the college itself navigates COVID through our rigorous safety protocols, adapting to all the technology challenges, and balancing out work and family while we all work, learn, and teach from home in various capacities, we hope to make this first ever Sculpture on Campus, SOC, virtual opening, an opportunity for more of you, the viewing public, from all over the world, in, to view and engage this artwork safely and experience the wide spectrum of visions each artist will communicate to you directly shortly in this program. At this point in the program, uh, to be honest with you, I was going to say a few words about each artist, but after previewing the interviews earlier this morning that are, that are way too soon, where each artist communicates so clearly their inspirations and human connections that embody their work, hearing my offerings would only really get in the way. So truly, welcome one and all. Look, we look forward to seeing you here in the future when the campus opens back up to the public again. But until then, everyone here at the college who has contributed immensely to this project in, in, in so many different ways welcomes you to Pima Community College and welcomes you to Sculpture on Campus. And so now, we're gonna actually look at the artist's interviews and uh, this is the real core of the program and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Totem, Deconstructed Shadow. The piece is inspired by seeing shadows cast all around us on the surroundings. Because living here in the desert, I, we have the sun all the time. It's part of our life. And I start paying attention to like the shadows of plants and things. And I started cutting these shapes out of metal. And then they're constructed into the sculpture so they become a three-dimensional object and they can actually cast their own shadows um, kind of within itself and then on surrounding areas. 
Jung talked about the shadow side, that we all have this hidden, mysterious, sometimes the side of us we're not so happy with or we don't want others to see. And this piece, in a way, is playing on the shadow and saying how important this is. And a lot of the creative ideas that make good art come out of these shadow ideas, and it brings it out and says, look, we all have this, we're all human, and, and we don't need to judge each other so harshly because this is just part of being humans. I'm hoping that it's different for different people and it can also evolve over time, but that it's really like an open door to, to questioning and seeing things differently. My sculpture is called Double Wide, six foot tall, laying on its side, shopping cart. It looks like a derelict shopping cart that you might see in a parking lot. I've been a sculptor for 43 years, went to college up in Phoenix and learned that I wanted to be a sculptor and learned how to start making things. I love to fabricate welding and working with wood. And I like to make objects and one time I was in a shopping center with my younger sister and we saw a shopping cart that had fallen over, somebody knocked over and it just seemed really funny. For some reason we just laughed and I, because it was, I think part of it was it was a utilitarian object that was rendered useless. We as an American society love to consume. Uh, I think that's part of a message if there's one in there. Many people have said, you know, you could take that to Costco because it would hold a lot. Uh, we like to overconsume, I think, really, uh, and especially true in the early part of the pandemic and the time we're living in now, you know, people went and it's still not known why toilet paper was being hoarded. Uh, I can't fit in here. Just hope that when that it'll be up long enough that people could come and look at it and wonder why it's doing what it's doing and have the picture taken standing inside of it and spinning the tires. The name of the piece is Persephone's Memory. So I cast my entire body in plaster gauze and those pieces, I've turned those into wax and then the wax will be cast into aluminum. I'm gonna mount them on steel. There'll be pieces missing where it's gonna be, you'll be able to see the aluminum and the steel frame underneath. Really that there's beauty in the not so typically beautiful things. I find a lot of beauty in grotesque and ugly things. And this is this piece is not gonna be a conventionally pretty body. It's lumpy, it's fat, it's missing pieces. The face is not a face of happiness, it's a face of kind of agony. Really the expectations and the demands that are put on women and their bodies and appearances and also my personal experience of being raised in an extremely religious, misogynistic household, which added even further demands on appearance. So I hope people see that it's, you don't have to be conventionally beautiful to find beauty in things. It's been a huge lesson in adaptability. I haven't really been able to do anything over the entire summer and I wasn't able to touch it again until classes opened up again in September so I've just been sitting with my anxiety all summer waiting anxiously really excited really honored really surprised still even six months in hopeful about the future more projects like this Lumen Felsen, 3D printed flowers that represent kind of what maybe flowers would look like if they were rock. They're in different colors, different materials. My inspiration for this piece came into taking the environment into account and what I thought would look nice. I, wanted, I knew I wanted to do a 3D printed um, sculpture. 
So I'm hoping people will take away something different that maybe they haven't seen before, something 3D printed. We've also worked alongside the makerspace. Um, so there is a part of scientific inquiry into this. We're using different materials. Uh, we want to see how well they last, uh, how, how well they, they hold up, how well the color holds up. We are still learning a lot about it. It'll be something a little different from everything else, but something that'll maybe inspire some students to try 3D printing. The title of the sculpture is Tower of Knee. It's a series of seven cast concrete and painted legs, one stacked on top of the other. It's a piece that I started many years ago. I made molds. The, the molds are directly taken off of legs, so it's actual people's legs. The uh, bottom knee, I think of it as sort of the anchor leg, uh, because she was a sprinter. She ran the anchor leg in a 440 relay. Uh, Melinda Sargent was an All-American NCAA sprint champion, 100-yard dash and 50-yard dash sprint champion, and her leg is the bottom leg in the column. The knee joint is the weak factor in the human anatomy in terms of strenuous physical exercise. And that's the first thing that tends to go out. And uh, that was kind of my initial focus was that vulnerability of that particular joint in the human body. I really like for people to take from it whatever it is that uh, it happens to suggest to them rather than me dictate something. At first glance, it would look abstract. I don't think you'll recognize that they're legs. I think it's just an abstract column from a distance and then recognition as with a closer examination, I think. <laughs> I said, well, you know what? Maybe I could do an ice wall because I had done some ice sculpture before. I had done some walls also in concrete. And, uh, and here we are. Water is precious. Of course, everybody talks about walls. And uh, so this is kind of part of it. Uh, but basically, I'm more like a formalist. I wanted to see the thing up and, and see how it looks like. And of course, the fact that it's changing, you know, from the minute to the minute is something interesting to me. Paintings still age, uh, but it, took, it takes a long time. And somebody said, when, when, when is the painting finished? And then somebody I said, well, I don't know when it's sold. And Andy Warhol said, when the check clears. And I said, well, it's actually finished when it's restored. And, uh, but here, it, it's, it's another aspect. In fact, we're in another discussion, which I'm interested in, to see it collapse in a way. To, to be honest, I'm pretty selfish. I mean, I'm interested in seeing the piece up and the rest of what people think or say about it. Uh, that's basically their, their positions. But I guess for students, there is the idea that, you know, you could do what you want to do and uh, just do it and then see what's happened. The title of my sculpture is Gyre. My art piece, when you first look at it, you'll think, my God, that is so simple. But the more you look at it, the more complex it actually becomes. You know, not only is it uh, you know, a very quiet little nod to my love of geometry, you know, shape and color and movement, but it's also a nod back to a simpler time, you know, when you used to play, when you used to just have fun. You know, this is a sculpture that you can go spin. You can watch it, the, the colors change as the sculpture moves around in the light. I hope it just makes people happy. I hope it makes people curious to walk up and look at it. It's okay to touch, you know, and to spin it and watch it change as it moves around. I, I just, I want people to be happy. Public art, in my opinion, is just saying, whoa, stop. Just, just take a breath, just take a minute. You know, that's all you need. Just look at it. Let it touch you. Let it move some emotion in you. The whole idea behind public art is you're out in public. So it's sad that we're losing that. You know, we're missing that for a while. But the fact that it will be online, the fact that people can see it that way, it'll get discussed. So all of the works here, I'm sure they will all be discussed at one point or another.
We hope you enjoyed those videos. And again, we thank you for joining us today to celebrate these newest installations in our Sculpture on Campus program, which resides at Pima Community College's East Campus. We also share our gratitude with Lee Lambert, Damian Klinko, and the tireless Mike Stack for sharing their time, inspiring remarks, and support of this great program. Today's event was arranged and organized by the talented crew from PCC TV and Pima's marketing and, pu and publicity office, and they have done an outstanding job. Thank you. We also thank the artists for sharing their inspiring work with all of us, and most of all, thank you for the opportunity to come together to enjoy art in the community that we share and we love. For more information about Sculpture on Campus, Pima's Arts Division, or upcoming arts events, please be sure to check out our website, pima.edu. Thanks so much, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you again soon. Wishing you a wonderful day.